got nothing. No, 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 no. I'm singing lyrics. I wasn't. <laughs> I ain't got nothing. Thank you very much. <laughs> I was singing Beyonce. Don't worry. The reason why we picked the Dunn Center for this amazing opportunity is because actually my first show that I had here, it was actually last year and it was around Christmas time and it was December. And I remember the energy in the crowd. It was, I mean, we've done a lot of shows since I've had my time on The Voice, but the energy in this room, it was like nothing I've experienced before. I mean, it was so amazing. By the last song, I jumped off the stage and was walking through the crowd screaming, you know, having them singing with me. And it was just a beautiful, amazing experience and my very first time kind of having a Christmas themed show. Um, so I wanted to come back here for another time. Um, I just have a lot of great memories in here and I'm pretty sure we'll be making a lot more in the future. Ever since I came out the womb, I was just surrounded by music because it was my parents' full-time job. Like, it, and still to this day it is. Like how, you know, they make their living is by singing and traveling from church to church and all that jazz. So when I was two, that was when I recorded my first song with my mom, you know, Diva Fluff Me. But then by the time I was seven, um, you know, they were a group and they had a third member um, that, you know, isn't in the marriage, no swingers here. Right. But um, an, another member who actually left the group, um, and then after that, they were like, okay, well, Brooke, come up and sing with us a couple times. It's cute. And then all of a sudden, my mom was like, where's that third part harmony coming from? And it turned out I had just been listening to Catherine, the former member, like so closely into the part she was singing that it just came naturally to me. So when I was seven, I started traveling full time as a member of the Mills family. You know, not, I mean, I already was in the Mills Absolutely. family, but as the band, the Mills family, you know? So yeah, I just grew up, whether we were in the back of a van and I'm sitting on top of the equipment or we're in a bus and I'm in my bunk and playing Nintendo and eat mac and cheese, <laughs> or if we were in the RV and I'm laying down with my brother and sister trying to wake them up and annoy them, um, it was just always the best experience. And even when I was tired or anything, it was always something I wanted to do. And I think even then, without me knowing it, subconsciously I knew that it's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life, which is why even when I was tired, it was worth it and it was happy. When she was old enough to talk, we lived in a single wide mobile home and so her bedroom wasn't too far from ours and she would wake up in the middle of the night and just stand up in her crib and just talk. So I'll come in and I'll say a name and she would repeat me perfectly. And um, so we decided to go in the studio when she was about two years old and we put her in that little box and the engineer was amazed that she didn't sound like your typical little kid that totally all over the place, but it was still cute. She was actually on key. And um, so we knew then she was born to do something greater than I could even imagine. I'm not gonna sit here watching the time go by, watching the clock spin around, watching the days count down. I'm not gonna lay here dreaming of other days. Thinking of all the ways, reasons why I should stay. Cause I've been lost, now I'm found. Oh, I'm free. And I've been blind, now I see. Oh, I'm free. I'm nowhere near perfect, but I'm learning and I don't need yesterday. I don't 
Don't you dare sit there watching the tide rise high and wishing that things will turn around, watching your dreams burn to the ground. Now everyone is lonely, but no one is really alone. We're all just searching for something, sick of returning with nothing, cause I've been lost. Now I'm found, oh I'm free. And I've been blind, now I see. I'm free. I'm no way near perfect. I'm learning. Oh, who needs yesterday when it was not perfect? I've learned it. Please tell me who needs all these perfect people in perfect places with perfect things to say. But I'm learning and I don't need it today. Cause I'm not running, not running from tomorrow, from tomorrow, tomorrow. Not running, not running from tomorrow. Uh. Towards tomorrow, towards tomorrow. Oh, oh, I'm running. Oh, I'm running towards tomorrow, towards tomorrow. I know what the perfect I'm learning. Oh, who needs yesterday? Being on The Voice was one of the greatest experiences of my life. Um, you know, I actually auditioned for The Voice four years prior to when I got the call to come and try again. Um, made it through the cattle call. After that, for the second call back, I, I didn't get a call back. So I was like, ah, it's okay, whatever. Wasn't meant to be. And then four years later, I'm in Florida and you know, me and my husband were just kind of praying for an opportunity or some kind of door to open because we knew that we wanted more than just where we were at at the time, but we felt stuck in every sense of the word. And randomly one day I got a call, hey, this is, they even used my maiden name. They said, hey, we're looking for Brooke Mills. Uh, we saw that you tried out four years ago in Atlanta. Do you wanna just try again? I mean, no promises, but do you wanna try? So I was like, sure. So I did, and then it ended up leading me to making it to the top three on the entire show. So, I mean, it was an incredible experience. I learned so much about myself as an artist, as a human, as a woman, and I made some of the greatest friends I'll ever have in my life. It's been 10 months since you hit me up I know you said we're over, finished, done We'll call it what you want, but it was love So who's this new girl that has you moving on? What's her name? What's she like? Is she cool or wound up tight? Where she lived? Be surprised if I stop by tonight. Cause I'm just a little bit crazy, baby. I'm just a little bit, just a little bit. I'm just a little bit crazy, baby. I'm just a little bit, just a pinch of it. I'm just a little bit crazy, baby. I'm just a little bit, just a smidge of it. I'm just a little bit crazy, baby. 
If I show up to her place, it's because I saw you're there on an Insta story in bed PJs on in messy hair on the fake account that I made just to stare at your pics at 3 a.m. in case I mistakenly double click. Cause I'm just a little bit crazy, baby. I'm just a little bit, just a little bit. I'm just a little bit crazy, baby. I'm just a little bit, just a pinch of it. I'm just a little bit crazy. I'm just a little bit, just a smidge of it. I'm just a little bit crazy, baby. Don't tell me to call. Just a little bit. I always felt, I don't want it to sound any type of way, but I always felt special being Native American. You know what I mean? Like I felt like it was something like if, if my voice went away or if my personality sucked or if I grew up and I won't cute. That's something that's so cool. You know what I mean? To say I'm freaking full-blooded Native American. <laughs> like who can say that? I mean, everyone says, you know, like, oh yeah, my great-great-grandmother's Cherokee, but like, no, I'm Halawasa Pony, bruh. Like, that's a big deal, that's crazy. So I've always taken so much pride in my culture, but when I was younger, I didn't dive into it like now that I'm older and look back, I wish I did. Like my little sister, when she was old enough and eligible, she ran for princess of our tribe, which was so cool. And looking back, I'm like, man, I should have done that. I should have ran for princess or I should have taken more beating classes or been more consistent in going to the culture classes where they teach you how to do the dances or teach you how to sing in the drum groups or how to play the drums and stuff like that. And how sick would it have been if I was like one of the only lady drummers? Because there's not a lot of ladies who play drums in the drum groups is normally like a, a dude's thing. Um, and when I look back, I'm like, man, I wish I did A, B, C, and D. But instead of letting that be something that hinders me or makes me feel like I can't be proud of my culture now, I decide, well, no, instead of that, I'm gonna pick up the mantle now and run with it. You know what I mean? In ways that I didn't think to when I was young. Faith song, I wrote that song years ago. I remember when I got the call that Faith had passed away and I was in college. I was staying up late with my roommate and we were sitting on my bed in my room talking and then all of a sudden I get a text message from my mom and saying, hey, Faith Hedgepeth passed away. You know, I know you're probably asleep, but give me a call in the morning. So I called her and then she told me, you know, the little bit of information that we had then and it, I mean, I just couldn't stop crying. And the thing is, me and Faith, we were never like best friends or like, you know, attached at the hip, but she was someone that made such a huge impact on our community. I mean, everyone knew Faith, everyone loved Faith, whether you were best buds and you hung out every day or you just saw her at the powwow or saw her down at Jernigan's convenience store. I mean, you love her. She's a beautiful girl, had a beautiful light, a beautiful spirit about her um, and so warm. Um, so her, that happening, it literally was a huge a blow to the heart to our community. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, she had a huge impact and you felt it um, when that news came out. So it was a couple of weeks that it passed by before I started to write that song, but I just, I knew um, 
that I needed to get out in some way, like all of the things, the mixed feelings and terrible emotions that I was feeling. So I wrote this song um, to, you know, just a, a piano melody that I had and I sent it to my mom and I was like, I don't know when, but I want to perform this someday. So, you know, fast forward to later when The Voice happens, um, I was asked to sing at our powwow, the Halawas Pony powwow. And I knew that even though it wasn't a song that people knew, it wasn't something that they could purchase or anything, and I wasn't going to go to the studio anytime soon, I, I just knew that I wanted to do that to for my community and dedicate it to them and dedicate it to her and her memory. Um, so I, I performed it then, and this is actually the second time I'm ever performing it. So um, it's super special, and um, it was just supposed to be um, obviously maybe like a band-aid to help the wound, you know, because it, it may not fix everything, but it'll help. So just something to bring us back together. We miss you. and hope we want you scared to let you go we need you why couldn't you stay we love you we haven't lost faith my daughter and all of my children at different stages of their age. When Brooke was a little girl, then all the children ran up to the front of the church, couldn't wait to see Brooke. 
Then she was a teenager. Then we would have youth conferences, and Brooke would sing those type of songs. And, um, and then our other two children as well. So as a mom, uh, just seeing God um, take the gifts that he entrusted me and her dad with and multiply them. That's our prayer. I mean, because um, the domino effect could go either way because um, alcoholism runs in both sides of our family, my family and her dad's family. So no, I'm just <laughs> really bad could happen or really good can happen. So to see her, to pick up a microphone at two years old and to sing and, um, and then to watch her unfold, her gifts unfold. And, and I've always been an alto, but to listen to her take her range like two octaves higher than what I can do. And, and I really sit some time, and she doesn't even know this, but I'll rewatch the, um, the videos and I'll just sit and I'll just say, oh, gosh, Lord, look at your awesomeness, how you can just take what we've had and what we instilled and just increase it so much. And to know that this is just, I'm honored that I was chosen to be her mom and I'm honored to be just a small fraction of what she's taken and taking it to a whole new level. Now I'm anxious to learn from her of always asking questions, how to warm up my vocals, and I want to learn from her how to write. She is such a phenomenal writer and she can write something in a few minutes and I'm like, where did that come from? And um, so it's incredible, I'm honored, and um, I'm just so thankful that God allowed me in this time in my life to experience it. Yeah, I would say like it's, it's so cool to kind of like see the contrast of then and now, you know, because like now when we get together, like when we were going over the song that we're going to do today together, um, I was thinking back to like back in the day when, because the high part came easy to me, but then it was like she was trying to teach me the low part. And I remember we were in the car, like driving somewhere in Rocky Mount and Big Girls Don't Cry by Fergie was on. And I was like, I hope you know, I, like I was trying to learn the low part and I kept getting frustrated and her trying to help me, even though she doesn't know the lyrics to this song. I remember being in the van and she's just trying to show me the low part, you know, and then now, um, like, of course, like every day, her and my dad, they're always going to be teaching me different musical things because they've been doing it their entire life. But now it's like, I'll hear harmony things that maybe they don't. Exactly. And then like, it's, you know what I mean? Exactly. I mean, and then also like, I mean, she, she talks about me being a great writer. They, her and my dad both have written songs before and they're great writers. But like, so from then me learning from then, from them to like now me trying to show them some of the things I do when I write and stuff like that. It's just really cool. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they 
shall see the Lord. But the eyes that only look to earth will lose their rich reward of the fellowship eternal. And no longer serve King me. Oh, you took, took me out of Egypt. Now take Egypt out of me. You delivered me from Pharaoh. Now set me free from me. Let my heart become a promised land where the desert used to. You took me out of Egypt Thank you for taking me out of Egypt Yes, you took me out of Egypt Now you're taking Egypt out of me Taking Egypt out of.